Have a good one. Bye. Hello, folks. Good morning. Uh, can you hear me? All right. Uh, welcome to uh, FlexJS, uh, an introduction. Let me know uh, when I when my volume goes low. I'm good? OK. Uh, my name is uh, Om Prakash Mopirala. I work for uh, IBM. I also uh, volunteer for the Apache Flex project, uh, part of the Apache Software uh, Foundation. Uh, IBM uh, has uh, graciously allowed me to work uh, on uh, Apache Flex um, as part of uh, their open source uh, uh, outreach. Uh, I am a, my background is I'm a UI architect uh, with uh, quite a bit of experience building UI for uh, consumer and uh, enterprise apps. Uh, I volunteer quite a bit of my time. Uh, uh, with uh, Apache Flex, both uh, the current SDK and uh, the new FlexJS initiative. Uh, I've used uh, a variety of uh, tools. And uh, I, I like to uh, uh, draw stuff on the screen. That's, that's where my uh, passion for uh, UI comes. Uh, just uh, a quick uh, poll. How many of you are, are familiar with uh, Adobe or Apache Flex? Show of hands. Uh, that's good to know. How many of you still have uh, code bases in uh, Adobe Flex or Apache Flex? That's good. Uh, how many of you are actively looking to move to a different uh, framework? Very good. <laughs> so yeah, uh, FlexJS um, is uh, a new initiative, part of the Apache Flex uh, project. And, and before I go, uh, they made me say this. Uh, anything I say here is not. Uh, on behalf of IBM or Apache or Apache Flex project. And uh, the Apache Flex uh, trademark belongs to Apache Software Foundation. I had to say this. I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, let's go into a little bit of uh, the motivation behind uh, this new uh, framework. Uh, why FlexJS? So earlier, uh, like a couple of years ago, at least, uh, uh, Flash used to be uh, Flash Player used to be available on uh, pretty much uh, every browser. This was before uh, iOS and everything. And uh, after iOS, uh, Adobe Air uh, kind of uh, filled that uh, gap. If you have a, a Flash application or a Flex application, you can actually cross compile it and make it as a native app, and it would run on uh, iOS and Android. But uh, and uh, Flex uh, used to. Uh, I'm sure uh, those who used Flex uh, can attest to how uh, productive it uh, made uh, developers. It had uh, tight integration with uh, IDEs, uh, code intelligence, uh, debugger, profiler, and basically you write once. You don't have to uh, worry about testing it on a lot of different uh, environments. So that was uh, then. And uh, what? happened after that is there are uh, the, there are a lot of devices there are a lot of systems where uh, flash player is not available and uh, uh, there are uh, operating systems where Adobe Air uh, cannot uh, target uh, iOS devices famously don't have uh, flash player and uh, Windows uh, phones uh, don't have Adobe Air runtime so so it, going into the browser, uh, is a must, and uh, you, you cannot build applications that run on uh, these kind of uh, closed systems. And uh, again, even today, as I saw by the show of hands, there are existing large uh, MXML and ActionScript uh, code bases. I, where I work, uh, we have a very large uh, code base uh, of uh, Flex projects, and. Uh, even today, uh, in spite of all the advance, advancements in uh, JavaScript and browser-based technologies, uh, writing JavaScript uh, code is not uh, a pleasant experience, at least my point, from my point of view. Uh, a, it makes uh, uh, easy to make uh, hard to find uh, bugs. I'm sure uh, uh, y you can relate to uh, that feeling. And uh, there are uh, frameworks that uh, have been uh, introduced, uh, which kind of uh, uh, it kind of makes your code uh, not look like uh, code. Or it, it most like mo it, most of them, it, most of the time, uh, it's hard to um, uh, read. It's hard to maintain, especially for uh, larger teams. Uh, 
So that's the motivation of uh, Flex.js. Now, what exactly is uh, Flex.js? Uh, it's a new application development uh, framework built uh, ground up. Uh, and uh, it uh, cross compiles MXML and ActionScript into HTML and uh, JavaScript. How many of you are familiar with uh, MXML? OK, who doesn't like MXML? Damn it. <laughs> Couple of people. I, I, I love uh, MXML. Um, I think it makes uh, life uh, so much more easier, especially for uh, a programmer who wants to build UI, uh, and uh, for dev uh, for designers who want to build uh, mockups. It makes uh, so much uh, sense uh, to have a, a, an XML-based uh, layout um, definition. So Flex.js uh, runs in two, two different places. It runs in a Flash Player environment. Uh, so wherever Flash Player is available, it will run like uh, usual. It also runs on uh, browser-based environments where Flash Player is not available. Uh, so that's where the cross-compilation of MXML and ActionScript into HTML and JavaScript uh, comes. So essentially, you can run it on your iPad. So I'm going to have uh, a nice little demo where we have a uh, pretty looking uh, Flex.js project running on uh, an iPad. And uh, it basically brings the advantages of uh, Flex to the HTML and JavaScript world. Uh, just a little bit of uh, hi uh, a few highlights. Uh, uh, MXML uh, data binding. Uh, so one of the biggest advantages of uh, Flex used to be was uh, uh, you can quickly create uh, screens and wire them up together, much like what AngularJS uh, uh, does with its uh, data binding today. Uh, so data binding is a very powerful uh, uh, tool uh, to have. And you can define uh, uh, states in uh, MXML. So uh, components or uh, panels or views can have uh, multiple states. And uh, you can define them in uh, MXML. And uh, so uh, I'm going to show some uh, codes, uh, some, some uh, code uh, for each and every uh, use case we are talking about. And uh, Flex.js uh, uses ActionScript uh, 3.0. Uh, ActionScript 3.0 is uh, based on ECMAScript uh, 4, which was what JavaScript uh, 2 was supposed to be. Uh, so it brings in a lot of uh, nice things uh, to uh, the scripting language. If you look at uh, ActionScript, it, it's very much like uh, JavaScript, except uh, you see uh, type definitions and uh, function uh, return types and all the nice things. Uh, they, there is a lot more to ActionScript. I'll go into that uh, a little bit uh, in detail in a while. Uh, Flex.js, uh, uh, so it's not only a framework, it is also a set of uh, uh, components, much like uh, the original Flex SDK was. So we have, uh, we plan to build uh, quite a big suite, uh, suite of uh, built-in uh, components. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, the framework should make it easy to build your own components on top of it. Uh, and because we are using uh, ActionScript, uh, it is so much easier to bring in your own favorite uh, design patterns, uh, Singleton, uh, MVC, or MVVM, or presentation model. You can. Uh, it just like uh, it's just like Java in terms of uh, design patterns. If you um, want a specific uh, design pattern implemented, like if you want to have an undo manager, you want to use the memento pattern. Uh, you can totally do it without having to go through uh, hoops to define those kind of uh, paradigms. And of course, uh, unit testing is very important. Uh, you so Flex.js uh, out of the box supports uh, Flex unit. Uh, so the nice thing is uh, it, it is integrated with the IDE. And uh, it, you can integrate it with your uh, CI system as well. So as for, for every check-in, uh, you, can, you can kick off your set of uh, unit tests uh, running. Uh, one second. So as I mentioned earlier, it's built uh, ground up. And it's uh, designed to be cross-compiled. So when we started uh, with the Flex.js uh, concept, we, there were a couple of ap approaches we could have taken. We could have tried to emulate the entire Flash player in uh, HTML, JavaScript. We quickly realized that um, it's, it's 
It's not impossible, but it's, it's close to impossible. It, it's going to take a lot of time to get everything right, if, especially if you want to do a pixel perfect uh, uh, porting. Uh, so the, the approach we decided to take was we want to bring all the nice features of uh, Flex, uh, which we are going to talk about. At the same time, uh, the SDK uh, needs to make sure that you don't depend on any particular uh, Flash player or action script specific uh, APIs. Once you start doing that, you're going to uh, lock yourself to one platform. You can't do cross-compilation easily, uh, which is the real goal uh, of this project. Uh, on the HTML and JavaScript side, uh, uh, the, the idea is to thinly wrap uh, available components and uh, expose uh, their API. And uh, our cross-compilation engine will call those APIs as you call them in uh, ActionScript. And we're going to look at some examples uh, uh, how that works. And uh, we have introduced a new uh, coding pattern. We learned, uh, we learned the mistakes uh, we committed in um, the Flex SDK. How, how many of you have seen the UI component in Flex SDK? It's huge, it's unwieldy, and uh, it's very, very hard to uh, modify. Uh, you, uh, it's like 50K plus lines of code. It's, it's some ridiculous amount of code in one component. So the, the, the paradigm over there was uh, inheritance, basically. Uh, you have uh, every component you see in uh, the old Flex SDK was inherited from UI component, which means that there was a lot of code added to it, assuming that everybody is going to, every component is going to require those uh, features. Uh, so FlexJS d does that uh, differently. Uh, this favors uh, composition over inheritance. Uh, we, we're going to look at uh, some uh, nice uh, diagrams to explain how uh, we, we do this. Basically, uh, the idea is to have uh, strands and beads. Imagine a, a component as a strand, and every functionality is a bead. So every component will add only as many beads, uh, or rather as many functionalities that particular component uh, requires. It's a pretty, uh, it, it's not a novel, uh, it's not a new idea, but it, the way we've implemented it, I think uh, it, it's going to make uh, for better performance uh, because you don't have every component ha carrying with itself tons of code. Uh, and uh, it'll create uh, smaller Swifts and smaller uh, JavaScript uh, downloads. And uh, basically, the goal of uh, FlexJS is to help you write your app uh, faster, which means uh, uh, tighter uh, integration uh, So uh, with, with IDEs. Uh, two IDEs support uh, FlexJS today, Ruby Flash Builder. So if you are already using Flash Builder, all you have to do is download uh, a new SDK. Uh, the Flex SDK, uh, import it into your project, and you can start building FlexJS applications. And uh, FDT, uh, anybody used FDT here? I see a couple of uh, hands going up. So yeah, FDT uh, also uh, started uh, supporting uh, uh, FlexJS. And on the flip side, on the on the JavaScript side, you have uh, you can if you are let's say you you are tied to any particular. Uh, JavaScript framework. Uh, at IBM, we have uh, Dojo. I'm sure there are companies that are already tied into frameworks like jQuery, CreateJS, or, or uh, AngularJS. Uh, so the idea is to wrap those components and uh, uh, make, the, make, make it uh, seamless for us to write an action script, while at the same time, your output is going to be exactly those uh, frameworks that you already know and use. The, 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 uh, the, the real benefit is instead of writing in writing your code in JavaScript or HTML, you can write it in uh, ActionScript and um, MXML. And uh, the JavaScript code that is uh, uh, output uh, comes in two flavors: one for um, uh, debugging. Uh, so basically, you have every class in its full form, uh, every JavaScript class in its full form. You can step through code in uh, Chrome or Firefox, Firebug. Uh, based on the code that f was uh, generated uh, by the FlexJS SDK. And of course, for a release, uh, you want a compressed or minified uh, JavaScript. So we use uh, Google uh, uh, Closure Compiler, uh, 
uh, to not just do minification uh, uh, or compression, uh, but also for uh, a lot of other things. Uh, that's a little. Uh, so, if you have any questions about how we use Google Closure uh, compiler, uh, we, that's a separate topic uh, we can talk about. Or grab me uh, after the talk, and we can uh, talk about it. Uh, so, so why ActionScript? As I hinted a few slides ago, uh, ActionScript uh, is a full-fledged object-oriented uh, uh, inheritance model. Uh, so from the JavaScript fold, it's, it's, it's different. Now, JavaScript is mostly its prototype-based uh, 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 object-oriented programming. Uh, ActionScript has uh, packages, classes, interfaces, uh, real uh, constructors. So, you can uh, you can statically type your code uh, as you are typing. Uh, a lot of people don't know uh, this. Uh, ActionScript actually has uh, uh, dynamic uh, typing as well. So you can write a complete ActionScript project just like uh, you would uh, in a JavaScript project. So if you are happy with JavaScript and you, you don't want uh, to type as you go, uh, that works as well. And uh, you are not going to have any kind of uh, performance uh, issues on the JavaScript side more than you would have when you normally write in uh, JavaScript. So the recommended uh, 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 path would be is to type all, all your classes, especially uh, when you're uh, in a multi-person team. So, so I've heard this. I don't know if uh, everybody agrees to it. Whenever. Uh, your team size is more than two, or your uh, project has more than five classes. Uh, people say use a compiler, use a compiled language. Uh, but I have worked with uh, JavaScript uh, projects with much more than that. Uh, the problem is uh, it's easy to commit mistakes, and those mistakes get propagated uh, easily to the and affect the rest of the team and the productivity much easier in uh, uh, in a JavaScript uh, kind of uh, language. So uh, easy to maintain, obviously, for uh, uh, medium to large uh, teams. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, because it's a, a real object-oriented uh, programming uh, language, you can do your design patterns, uh, your classes, interfaces, inheritance, encapsulation, uh, polymorphism. Everything works out of the box. Uh, so the way you think. Uh, about your code will be very, very different. And uh, you can model your uh, uh, classes. You can use uh, external code generator. You can draw your UML diagrams, emit action script uh, classes, and then you can use that as a starting point. And that gets cross-compiled into JavaScript as well in a, in a, in a nice. So I'll show you uh, the JavaScript code that gets emitted. Uh, it's actually uh, pretty nice, too. So. You can also use it in scenarios where uh, you want to do a, a one shot, throw it across the wall. If you have a large ActionScript code base, you can always try to cross compile it into JavaScript. Uh, they, so I've had this uh, question asked before. If you have a large uh, existing code base, uh, what does it take to move to FlexJS? Uh, or to move, make it uh, cross-compile to uh, HTML JavaScript, the answer would be is just look at your code, see how many references to uh, flash dot something, package names you have. Uh, essentially, those are the classes you need to go in and make changes. So most likely, uh, that is going to be things like um, view, view components, uh, or you're listening to mouse events and things like that. Uh, what is most likely uh, going to be easy to get cross-compiled if you have designed your uh, project in a, a decent uh, 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 architecture design as uh, models and your controllers. They usually don't have, uh, if you follow MVC, they usually don't have uh, uh, close ties to uh, views, which means your model classes uh, in ActionScript should be very, very easy to be cross-compiled to JavaScript. Your uh, controllers uh, should be very easy to uh, be cross-compiled. Uh, and uh, let's move on to why uh, MXML. Uh, like uh, HTML, MXML is a, a XML uh, markup language. Uh, if you like uh, HTML, I don't know. So in my experience, I don't use a lot of uh, HTML, I just write uh, JavaScript straight up and uh, ma manipulate the DOM. Uh, 
Uh, and very few cases, uh, for example, in Dojo or jQuery, I use a, a HTML template and then uh, fill it in with uh, JavaScript during uh, runtime. Uh, that's mostly because of the limitations of uh, HTML. Uh, it's not really um, uh, extensible. Uh, you cannot create your own uh, tag and expect the browser to understand it. But uh, MXML is it's it's truly extensible. It means that uh, you can create a class. Uh, let's say you you can create a class that extends uh, label, uh, my fancy label, and uh, you can write have all your uh, uh, logic in it. And uh, you can actually uh, uh, instantiate it in your MXML uh, class by referring to it as a tag. So essentially, you are uh, extending uh, MXML as you go. The compiler uh, is smart enough to understand that that component refer uh, reference in your MXML actually has a class behind it, this action script code behind it, and it's going to go uh, reference it and put it in your uh, application. Uh, so, again, uh, when we uh, show some uh, code examples, uh, we're going to talk about MXML uh, more. Uh, so, enough talk, uh, 22 minutes into uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, let's uh, look at some uh, code. So, the input is going to be MXML and ActionScript, output is HTML, JavaScript, uh, SVG, CSS. Uh, the first example, I'm going to start with a very, very simple example. Uh, is a stock quote. Is that uh, clear? Better, right? Uh, I've zoomed it. I don't know what's going to happen uh, after this, but let's see. Uh, so this is a very simple uh, uh, FlexJS application. What it does is uh, it gets uh, whatever uh, symbol you type here or you select from uh, the list over here. It's going to fetch its uh, current uh, stock code. Uh, so this shows uh, data binding. So essentially, you are selecting from a list over here. You are selecting from a list, and uh, that gets uh, populated in the uh, text box over here. And uh, this is your uh, HTTP uh, web service. Uh, you're making a call to uh, finance.yahoo.com, uh, uh, passing it uh, the parameters. And uh, let me quickly see the network. Yahoo get code. So it is actually making uh, making a request and uh, fetching it. Uh, so one other uh, thing you can see is you can choose to see all the data uh, that was uh, retrieved, and or you can choose to hide it. So this is essentially uh, MXML uh, states in action. So you have two states. You have uh, show all state, and you have uh, uh, show just. Uh, the uh, code state. So very quickly, let's look at how the I'm, I'm opening up uh, my IDE to show you. Uh, So essentially, uh, this is the MXML code behind it. Most of it is MXML. Just the controller part uh, is action script. It's uh, up and uh, up and top. Uh, so here you can see uh, there are the states that we've defined over here, and uh, the component has one uh, bead. Essentially, what we are saying is this uh, container needs to have uh, a data binding. So uh, the, the difference between the old flex and uh, uh, the flex JS is data binding uh, comes in uh, with every component, which means that even if you don't use data binding and you instantiate a class in your uh, application, it's going to carry all that unnecessary data binding. But over here, you have to specifically say, I, I want view-based uh, uh, data binding. Uh, and uh, if you don't want to. Uh, as a developer, if you don't want to specify this all the time, you can always create a custom class. 
and uh, which always has data binding. So you know that you have that uh, flexibility and you don't have to pay for something that you do not want in terms of uh, runtime uh, performance. And uh, yeah, they, there are nested uh, components and each of them uh, have a, a layout. Basically you're saying it's a vertical layout and then you lay out the objects on the screen and uh, you have uh, nested uh, containers. And uh, just one important thing to note here is, so you have a text area at the bottom, and uh, it just says include in uh, show all, which is, this is all you need to uh, do to uh, enable states. So you have two states, uh, show all or, uh, show all or uh, hide all. Hide all is a bad name for a state. Uh, hide that particular uh, text area. And in your code, uh, since this is a simple example, all the action script code is in the same uh, file as well. Uh, some people like it, some people hate it, uh, but, but it's up to, up to you as a developer. Uh, so essentially, you attach event handlers uh, to the checkbox over here, and in your uh, event handler, all you have to do is set the current state. Basically, you're toggling. So this is a very, very simple example, but you can imagine uh, it has all the ingredients uh, you need to create a really, really powerful application uh, just with these components. Uh, let's look at um, the next example. Uh, it's uh, the next one is uh, Google Maps uh, uh, demo. Essentially, what we wanted to uh, highlight was uh, how easy is it to uh, take existing JavaScript uh, components and libraries and uh, uh, manipulate it through ActionScript and uh, MXML. So let me open the demo. Let me reload the page. Again, okay, let me increase the size. All right. Uh, so, uh, see, uh, you have uh, a location input up on top. Uh, as always, you can uh, select pre existing uh, locations, uh, and uh, it'll get this will get populated over here. The same uh, data binding uh, handler you're going to pass it to this component over here. This is actually a map component, which is wrapped uh, uh, in, uh, wrapped in uh, ActionScript, and obviously it's wrapped in uh, JavaScript as well. Uh, uh, the mechanism of how we wire these things together, I'm going to show you uh, in a different uh, screen. Uh, so you can actually type, um, I'm going to type my own hometown, Samadio and uh, hit uh, go. Anybody from Bay Area? Yeah, yeah. somebody here, nice. <laughs> uh, let's just search for Hillsdale. Oh, too many things, Hillsdale Mall. Right, so uh, it makes a call to the Maps uh, Google Places API. It drives the, uh, sends the current uh, location, and uh, it's going to populate the results in uh, dropdown. So this is so this shows um, uh, MXML uh, data binding uh, states, uh, uh, web uh, service calls, and uh, wrapping uh, JavaScript uh, libraries. Uh, very quickly, let's look at the code for this. So, so I, I think now you can uh, start getting a feel of how the code is going to be organized in uh, MXML. So it's it's actually very uh, visceral because uh, the flow here is you have 
a horizontal uh, set of components and everything is vertically uh, vertically laid out so you have uh, the the main container uh, it's very simple you set its x and y and then you have a bead which essentially says hey you need to uh, uh, invoke a, a, vert a vertical uh, layout for this uh, top level component it has uh, let me this is easier Right, so you have uh, three components underneath it. Uh, one container for the top set of components, and, uh, and then you have uh, the map, and then you have another uh, container for, for everything in the bottom. So, I think I did something. I need to unfold it. Right. Uh, so yeah, this is how you uh, lay it out. And you notice uh, the map is actually uh, a, a component over here. And uh, if you look at the definition in uh, ActionScript, it's going to be a bunch of uh, API calls. And uh, when you write the uh, code, you are actually going to reference map in ActionScript. You're going to reference maps, APIs. And all this gets cross-compiled in uh, the JavaScript uh, side. So let me go to the last uh, uh, example I'm going to show today, uh, visualization using charts. Uh, I love uh, uh, charts in uh, MXML. I love charts in general, because it shows data, and it, it's cool to draw something on the screen. Uh, everything uh, comes together in charts for me. Uh, so here is an example. All right, here is a chart example. I believe this is, this is Flash. Uh, I can't even say it because it looks exactly the same in uh, Flash and uh, JavaScript. So this is the Flash version. You have uh, multiple kinds of charts. Uh, this is an area where we are doing a lot of uh, work right now. We want to support a lot of uh, types of charts uh, out of the box. And uh, we're building a framework where you can create your own charts as well. And I, I know that's very key, too. Uh, so you have your side-by-side uh, uh, -side columns, side-by-side -side bar charts, stacked columns, stacked uh, bar, pie charts, uh, your line charts. And uh, you have your vertical axes, uh, horizontal axes, category axes. Uh, so pretty much uh, everything that uh, charts need uh, are actually in place now. It's just a matter of uh, building all the different kinds of uh, charts. Uh, so let's look at uh, how this looks in uh, HTML and JavaScript. So this is HTML. Can you believe it? Uh, so this is the left side is Flash. The right side is HTML. I can prove to you by right clicking and uh, do an inspect element. And uh, there you go. So uh, for the graphics part, we are actually uh, using uh, SVG. Uh, essentially, any uh, Flash is good at drawing vector graphics. And uh, on the HTML JavaScript side, uh, SVG comes very close to uh, uh, Flash in terms of uh, rendering fidelity. So we started doing some uh, drawing API experiments. We had a lot of uh, success. And uh, we went uh, full on uh, integrating uh, uh, SVG in our um, HTML5 JavaScript side. Uh, very quickly, I'm going to show you the code for this. So this is the actual code for the uh, chart example we saw. Oh, by the way, uh, I forgot to show you the charts. Wow. 
Wi-Fi issues. All right, so here is, the, this is the same exact code, uh, no gimmicks or anything, same exact code uh, that you see over here that is running on an iPad. Uh, so everything looks exactly the same. Uh, I was really surprised. When I, I wrote a lot of uh, the uh, uh, drawing API, and I was doing cross-device testing, and uh, I was really surprised when everything looks exactly the same. So uh, this gives me a lot of hope because uh, uh, once we have the core drawing APIs working across all the devices from Swift all the way to uh, iPhones, I iOS devices, uh, I'd like to show this on my uh, Android phone as well. It works exactly the same. I can show it to you later. We don't uh, running out of time. Uh, so uh, the, the code, yeah. So it's very, very simply, you have a definition of a column chart. It has a, a, a one bead. Basically, you want a constant uh, binding. You can take a look at the code, what uh, constant binding actually brings to the table. Uh, so once you are done with defining the beads, you need to specify the uh, series for the column chart. You have uh, two series over here. One is uh, sales 2013, the other one is sales 2014. And uh, you can see that uh, you can uh, declaratively uh, define your uh, item renderers. Essentially, here you are saying use a box item renderer, and uh, use a fill with solid color. Uh, I think this is the uh, orangish, orangish color. And uh, the second series, you're saying use this color. You can, you can also do uh, linear uh, gradients. Uh, I'm working on radial gradient and things like that. So this is your uh, column uh, chart. And then you have your uh, bar chart, which looks pretty much uh, the same. If you think this is a lot of uh, code, you can always take this and uh, uh, put it in a class on its own. And uh, all you have to do is give it new data, and it's going to look the same every time. Uh, but this works well for uh, showing uh, the, uh, the examples. So you have your stacked column chart, stacked uh, bar chart. You have your pie chart. And uh, the thing is, the nice thing is, here you have your item renderer, and it's a wedge item renderer. You can uh, define your own item renderers for these kind of charts. And uh, you have uh, a line chart. And uh, there you go. You have your uh, vertical uh, axis and your uh, horizontal axis. The other one had uh, a category axis uh, as well. Uh, so that's the part about. Uh, let me go back to my slides. Right. So here, here is the magic that happens. For me, this is all uh, magic. Somebody else worked on the uh, compiler part. Uh, so there was a new version of the compiler, of X compiler built, uh, called uh, Falcon. And uh, that let us uh, have, uh, it split the compiler into a back end and a front end. And uh, so on the back end, you can have uh, uh, sp uh, your pre compiled uh, code spit out uh, any other kind of, uh, 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 any other kind of programming language uh, code. You can it can do bytecode or you can do uh, so basically uh, our current uh, Falcon compiler takes ActionScript MXML and converts it into ActionScript bytecode, which gets uh, slapped uh, onto a Swift file and the Flash player runs it in runtime. Uh, Falcon JX is the second part of the compiler, which takes that uh, generated uh, bytecode and converts it into uh, uh, HTML, JavaScript. SVG and everything. Uh, mostly it's uh, JavaScript, uh, because everything gets converted into ActionScript, uh, bytecode, and 
that has a direct one-to-one -one correspondence with uh, uh, JavaScript uh, that's get, that gets generated. And uh, so uh, quickly, your uh, So your uh, MXML action script files from your own uh, apps uh, app project, along with the SDK's uh, action script and MXML files, they get compiled into uh, uh, a Swift file, which runs inside the Flash player. So the same code using uh, a slightly different uh, backend uh, uh, in the Flex uh, in the Falcon JX uh, compiler gets compiled into your main HTML5 and everything else is cross-compiled into JavaScript. And obviously, as you've seen in the demos, you can run it on uh, your uh, browsers uh, and on uh, devices. Um, and the nice thing is uh, you can always, uh, so there are, we have worked on uh, uh, examples where you can take your generated JavaScript code and run it uh, through uh, uh, Apache Cordova and create a phone gap uh, application as well. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I think we don't have time to go into that demo, but uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, very quickly about the component uh, architecture. Uh, as I said, uh, FlexJS is all about uh, strands and uh, beads. Here are uh, two components. This is The red one is a component. The blue one is a component. And you add your beads on top of it. Uh, a simple MVC component would have a, a controller a view and a model bead. And uh, once you define those uh, uh, beads, you can take them, and in your application logic, you can um, uh, uh, use uh, composition or even inheritance as needed and make the, and wire them together. Uh, so essentially, components are bundles of uh, functionality uh, formed by composition rather than inheritance. So it's a pay-as-you-go philosophy and you build your components uh, you you use functionalities uh, that uh, that really uh, are required and you don't get any extra craft uh, in your code just add the features you need a uh, component uh, consists of uh, strands and beads a strand is the component uh, wrapper and a bead encapsulates a, a piece of functionality be it uh, a view model or a layout or a skin. So everything you add to a component is a bead. And you add it only if you really need it. Uh, so uh, beads interact with one another through uh, events. So uh, which is where uh, uh, action script uh, and its nice uh, 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 utilities come into play. You can either do direct manipulation, you can do a, a mediator pattern. Basically, your strand is your uh, mediator, and all the view beads talk to each other by pushing an event up to uh, the mediator, and the mediator calls APIs. Or if you choose, you can also make one bead uh, talk to another. Uh, that kind of reduces the utility of each bead, because if you make them directly talk to each other, then you have to include both of them if you want to include only one. Uh, so events are best. Or Communicating through the parent via mediator pattern is uh, better as well. Uh, the same uh, concept uh, uh, as an example. So you, you have a, a text input component. And uh, the basic text input component is composed of a text model, uh, a view. Basically, uh, on the action script side, uh, flash side, uh, the view bead is uh, a text field. It's a native text field uh, uh, object. Uh, that Flash Player provides. On the JavaScript side, the view bead actually encapsulates a HTML element for text input. Uh, and then you have a keyboard uh, controller. So this is out of the box. And uh, let's say you want to build a component uh, with, uh, let's say, a, a, an email uh, validator. So you want to add a new bead for email validation logic. So as you are typing, you are actually, you are actually invoking code from this bead. Uh, to validate it. And if you want to have a prompt, for example, like a, uh, a faint prompt, uh, uh, and you just uh, add logic in a, a text prompt bead and add it to your text component uh, strand. Uh, so the, again, uh, the, uh, what I want to emphasize is you, you probably don't want all your text components to have email validation, password, uh, uh, logic, or uh, prompts, uh, 
these are functionalities you get, you add as you need it. So building these functionalities as uh, beats and attaching is the uh, way to go when it comes to FlexJS. Uh, I think we are close to, uh, so in uh, 2014 we made a couple of uh, releases of FlexJS. Uh, I believe 1.2 is uh, coming out in uh, 2015. Uh, what this means is we want to build as many uh, uh, as much of framework support for building a lot of types of components as possible. Uh, that does not mean that you can take your Flex current Flex project and try to replace it with uh, FlexJS. It will do a very good job of taking you to an extent. You have to rewrite uh, some parts of your application when you're moving from Flex SDK to uh, FlexJS SDK. Uh, that said, uh, we are open source. There's nothing, uh, there is no company uh, controlling uh, uh, FlexJS, we're part of uh, Apache Flex, which is actually part of uh, the Apache Software Foundation. So we need uh, help. If you have time or if your company has resources to uh, uh, spend, uh, we need help with uh, testing, development, documentation, examples, uh, uh, evangelizing uh, uh, this uh, platform. Uh, if you're interested, uh, you can always uh, uh, communicate to us uh, through our mailing list, dev at uh, flex.apache.org. Uh, this is where uh, every question regarding FlexJS uh, would get answered very, very quickly. Uh, and we have a wiki page. Uh, if you want to uh, note it down, please do. I'm going to make these slides uh, available upon the website as well. And uh, you can reach me via Twitter at uh, bigosmallm. Uh, or you want to email me, bigosmallm at uh, apache.org. So as a summary, uh, FlexJS apps is designed to run in uh, any browser, uh, regardless of availability of Flash Player or not. Uh, it will run on more devices as a result, obviously. And uh, the aim of FlexJS is to improve uh, productivity. And uh, you, as a developer, as a company, you can actually have a stick in uh, this uh, SDK, because it's open source. Uh, so please uh, support uh, FlexJS and Apache Flex in any way you can. And uh, with that, I'm going to open the floor for uh, questions. Please go ahead. So yeah, um, you mean right? So the the approach we are taking is it's actually a clean separation from the Flex SDK, the current Flex SDK. But we want to build as many features as possible into Flex S Flex JS ground up. So we don't directly support a Spark button, for example. But we take all the nice things from Spark button, remove all the unnecessary craft, and then build this. Uh, ground up. So you'd be trying to cross compile. If you saw a Spark button in uh -huh. the application, you'd try to take it over to the. I assume that JX was in a new namespace. It's, it's a namespace. Uh, we are still working on it. It's, nothing is uh, uh, set in stone. But yeah, JX is, yeah. So is it fair to say this project is targeting more new code development rather than focusing on trying to cross compile existing? Right. So, uh, yeah, the, the question is, uh, is is the target of this project uh, uh, towards new code development or cross-compiling existing projects? I think uh, it's your mileage may uh, vary uh, depending on how well your current Flex project is organized. Uh, if you're going to take that code and move to a JavaScript uh, code base, let's say Angular, right, you're going to rewrite pretty much everything, right? Uh, there's nothing you can... Uh, port uh, using a tool. Uh, but if you have an MVC structured project, as I said, uh, the view alone, uh, you have to rewrite in uh, FlexJS ground up. And your model classes, like large applications, can model classes alone can get really big. And your controller logic, uh, you can port those uh, pretty easily. Uh, I don't have uh, real life. Uh, uh, examples where we have taken a big project. There's actually one 
uh, project right now, one of our uh, developers is working to cross-compile an existing uh, uh, Spark-based uh, project and see what it takes to make it work in uh, Flex.js. Uh, but there is no magic bullet. I think that's the key here. Uh, Flex.js, uh, the, the flip side, uh, we really encourage uh, new developers who are familiar with ActionScript, MXML, or any uh, object-oriented programming language experience, uh, you, you can make your life so much easier uh, by using uh, Flex.js because you, as I said, all the nice things about uh, MXML and ActionScript uh, makes your code easy to maintain and all those things. Thanks. Question? Everything simply? Everything, I mean, what does it mean to have things organized into the strand in terms of their scope or their access to each other? Is it packaging? Right. So it, it, it all ties uh, things together. So there's, uh, so I, I don't know if you were uh, here for the part where I talked about the UI component class in uh, current Flex SDK. Uh, so the current Flex SDK has uh, this UI component class, which is the base class for pretty much everything in the SDK. Uh, so because things are set up like that, uh, everything, uh, one second, are we running out of time? OK, all right, thanks. Uh, so uh, because uh, everything was inherited from UI component, uh, a lot of uh, code was getting thrown into UI component, and the assumption was, hey, these two classes, these two components need it. Let's put it in UI component and make every component uh, 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 pay for it, even though they don't have. So there are, uh, if you look at uh, a button and you go all the way, button has uh, scrolling logic, vertical scroll position. You are never going to use scrolling uh, on a button. So these kind of... Uh, uh, functionalities because it's in a, a, a high, very high level uh, superclass. It gets cascaded uh, to all uh, subcomponents. So the 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 flip side is instead of using inheritance, we want to use uh, composition. So everything, every feature you want, you want to add it as a bead. So basically, a bead is a piece of functionality. And yeah, go ahead. Right. So what does strands do? Why is your app not just a big bucket of beads rather than where, where does strands come in? What does strands do? So basically uh, encapsulating the logic for that component. So uh, it's something like the presentation model, right? So you have uh, you have one component that kind of uh, has the logic for, for example, a button has four different states, up, over, down, and uh, out. Uh, there is going, there is, there's going to be some component uh, that's going to encapsulate this logic, and uh, it's going to listen to your keyboard, uh, rather mouse controller bead. Uh, mouse controller bead is going to listen to those uh, events and then set the state. And uh, each skin, right? Each state uh, is in a, is defined in a skin. The skin is a bead itself. Now, you can choose not to have a skin for your component and make it look like the plain uh, one because your application doesn't need a fancy skin.